Welcome back to the Cross Border Interview Podcast. Today we are sitting down and talking with Calgary mayoral candidate Bradfield. Brad, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me, Chris. I really appreciate it. Uh, my first question to all the candidates, all politicians, is this: Where does your sense of duty come from? Yeah, it goes. I mean, serving the community. My, really, I think it goes back to my dad. You know, for the most part. Uh, uh, you know. As a kid growing up under a, a, a arguably a workaholic, uh, both uh, you know in his home life as well as his uh, career and so forth, and just working in the community, uh, you know you you serve others, right? And uh, my uh, dad had a saying that I live by today: uh, take care of family and treat your friends like family. And uh, so that kind of resonates with me. Uh, you know, people I cross paths with uh, on a daily basis, whether through business in the community. Uh, you know, here at work. Um, yeah, it's it's serving other people and, and, and having those meaningful relationships. Uh, so that's kind of the way I operate is, is just building relationships. And if I can help in any way, uh, that's how I uh, that's how I roll. And uh, I enjoy doing it. Was politics ever in your family? Did your mother and father talk about politics around the dinner table? Or is, are you the black sheep of the family and sort of running being the first yeah. candidate in the family? Yeah, you know, it's funny, uh, funny you say that, uh, you know, I grew up, uh, in, you know, here in South Calgary, uh, in, uh, you know, uh, you know, bordering Fish Creek Park, riding my bike through Fish Creek Park, the dinner table conversation. Yeah, very, I, I wouldn't say superficial. Uh, but yeah, everybody always talks politics, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, who you voting for, and so forth. So, uh, yeah, there's no question the discussion was there, but I'm definitely uh, uh, breaking ground here in our family around uh, running for uh, uh, public office for sure. Yeah, there's no question. This is, uh, it's new to me. It's new to my family and uh, it's, it's been great. So let's talk about that because uh, this is your first campaign and this is your first uh, kick at the can for uh, uh, elected politics. So why decide now? What, what made the decision for Brad to get into this campaign easy in 2021 yeah so this this journey i call it uh, started for me about four and a half five years ago uh when uh, i was approached by some fellow calgarians uh citizens of calgary and uh you know friends of mine people i worked with in the community in the business community and they said hey have you ever considered running for public office and I said, uh, hell no, <laughs> no, I have not. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, at that time, I was just another average citizen with an opinion uh, about politics, leadership, uh, you know, different government uh, levels and so forth. So at, at that time, I declined uh, because honestly, I'd never even considered it. But what it got me thinking was, you know what, I've, I've worked in the community. I've worked uh, through my business um, uh, dealings with the city of Calgary. I'm a vendor with the city of Calgary for 25 plus years. I've been a vendor uh, and had a relationship with uh, different government agencies all over North America for 25, 30 years. So it's not like I was uh, new to working in the government sector and so forth. Um, but what it does, it got me thinking about, okay, community service, you know, I've, I've worked in non for profits, I've worked in community associations, teaching board governance, I've done charitable work, this isn't a stretch. So I thought, you know what, let's talk about it, let's think about it. So uh, what I did is I inserted myself into the conversation, I started showing up at council meetings and just sitting in the audience and watching, you know, uh, the inner workings, the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, what was working, what, what isn't working. And so fast forward to 2017, when uh, Mayor Nenshi was reelected, uh, those same phone calls and emails came in and said, hey, have you thought about it? And I said, way ahead of you, I'm in. And <laughs> wow. uh, so, so yeah, we've been on this. I've been committed for over three years now and building out a team and, and so forth. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm just absolutely excited about the opportunity to, uh, to give back to the community that's uh, given me so much, both personally and professionally. One of the biggest things that uh, you have uh, that is going for you and potentially going against you at the same time is you are not a sitting incumbent ca uh, Calgary mayor or a councillor. Um, the people I speak to, and yet again, I'm only relatively new to Calgary, so I've only been here for two years, but the people on my street, we, we talk socially distanced, that is. Um, City Hall is a mess. City Hall is a mess. So how does your background best address the mess that is at City Hall compared to the people who are there already working at City Hall as a councillor? 
Right. Yeah. You know, I've got a, again, my track record, uh, I guess, going back, uh, I started my first business when I was 12, uh, <laughs> bought my first real estate in my teenage years. Uh, I've built, bought and sold businesses in different jurisdictions around the world, uh, in different industry sectors, everything from healthcare to fire suppression to heavy equipment repair. I mean, there isn't anything I don't look at without a, without a business lens. Uh, but that being said, I've also been active in the community, um, you know, and working in the non-for-profit sector, mental health and addiction. So I've got a great experience uh, level. Uh, you know, I, I'm one of the few candidates that actually signs the front of a paycheck, uh, not just the back of a paycheck. And so, you know, I bring that years of leadership, positive collaborative leadership to the table and new perspective. You know, at the end of the day, I think, you know, sitting counselors or incumbents in general sometimes get mired down in, in, into the weeds, into the thick of it and, and, and can't get out in a lot of cases. So bringing in a new perspective, there's no question that uh, I have an uphill challenge because I don't, I'm not an incumbent. I don't have name recognition, but that's why we started over three years ago, building up name recognition. That's why, you know, you're seeing the mail outs in, in your mailbox, uh, you know, building up that profile within the city of Calgary. I often uh, joke that I'm, I'm a somebody in my world, uh, but I'm a nobody in the rest of the world. And so building up that name recognition, making sure that uh, people recognize me, not only visually, but, you know, my name and so forth. So it's a challenge, but we're, we're up for the challenge. And, you know, for me, being the differentiator, you know, if you want status quo, if you want to continue what you see at City Hall, then you're going to, you have lots of choices. You've got three choices right now. You can stick with status quo and, and vote in one of the incumbents. If you want significant change, if you want to see real change at City Hall and, and how we operate, uh, then there's only one choice, and that's me. There's a lot that I want to unpack because uh, uh, one of the key priorities, and I think this is, I don't think this is a surprise to you when I say this, but you, you've made economic development a key priority of this campaign for yourself. Um, it is prominent on your website, and uh, when you read your mail out, it's there. Um, the city of Calgary is at a cross section right now. We can go two different ways. We can go down the, like you said, the path of least resistance of going with someone who is established or going with yourself. How do you best prepare the city of Calgary in a potential first term as mayor for the challenges that lay ahead? Because we are seeing businesses close up shop due to COVID-19. We are seeing people leave the city of Calgary because of uh, no job opportunities. So how do we bring back the economic driving force that was Calgary? Because we have been hit twice in the last 10 years, boom and bust uh, oil industry, and now this COVID. So how do you best prepare Calgarians for the future and drive the economic back? Right. Yeah. Well, first of all, the, the day after I'm elected, it starts, you know, within the first hour, setting the tone very early about respect and decorum and collaboration within city council, but also through its city administration in the 14,000 uh, employees of the city of Calgary. Uh, for so long, uh, the culture, what I call the culture uh, within the city uh, has been skewed or broken in, in a way. I, I've worked with uh, lots of fantastic city employees, right from org chart level, right down to uh, the lower level positions. And I'll say this, uh, that the vast majority of city employees, like the private sector, come to work every day wanting to provide value to the citizens of Calgary. Uh, but the system doesn't allow. It's not the people that's broken within the system. The system itself is broken. So one, you know, saying the tone early for, you know, positive collaborative leadership uh, and empower, start empowering our city employees, our city administration to uh, bring innovation and cost saving measures to the table. But on the economic front, again, we got to change the narrative uh, about doing business in the city of Calgary. And right now, uh, we're a no-go zone. I, you know, I call that, you know, like, if you're already in Calgary, you're trying to be pushed out. And <laughs> if, if you want to come to Calgary, you're not welcome, right? And, and it comes down to, you know, changing that narrative, having that open arms and saying, what do we need to do to, one, retain existing businesses in the city of Calgary and to attract new as well? And right now it comes down to, you know, taxes. It comes down to, you know, permits and licensing. There's so many layers that need to be cleaned up uh, in order to create that narrative that Calgary is open for business and we want to do business. There's billions, if not trillions of dollars sitting on the sidelines globally looking for a place to uh, uh, be parked or invested. We need to be that city. We want want to be at the top of the list of where um, people want to open up their business, want to expand their existing business here in the city of Calgary. So changing the narrative, um, you know, just in the last two weeks, we had that 
two million two hundred million dollar fund or sign off uh, through council for downtown revitalization. That's an important step. There's no question. I think it's a little bit of a half measure. I've got some uh, line item issues uh, that uh, you know. There's a ten million dollar line item for additional staff to oversee the downtown revitalization. Uh, do we really need to add another ten million dollar line item for staff? I, I have my doubts. But the investment around um, you know arts and culture and uh, safety in the downtown core, uh, converting some office space, uh, uh, maybe uh, even looking at uh, uh, taking down some buildings and, and repopulating the downtown core, uh, both business as well as residential. So there's that's a great step. But until we change the narrative around being open and welcoming uh, to business here in the city of Calgary, um, half measures such as $200 million towards revitalization uh, won't fix the problem. We got to fix at the core level of how we do business in the city of Calgary. As someone who used to work for a municipality, I know that changing the narrative is a must, a key priority for all municipalities. It is not just Calgary's issue, it's all municipalities. Everyone is seeing businesses leave. How do you change the narrative, but also address that we are a small fish in a big pond as much as, much as Calgary is a massive city, it is still a small fish when you look at the grand scale of Vancouver, Toronto, London, New York. So how do you get those people by changing the narrative, but also by competing with much larger cities? Yeah, you know, it's, it, again, it goes back to vibrancy. You know, uh, creating that <clears throat> downtown core that uh, attracts people, the city itself. You know, we have this great geographic location to the mountains. So, you know, that box is checked. You know, outdoor uh, outdoor venues. We have two rivers that run through downtown Calgary. Uh, I walk the pathway. I try to walk the pathway along uh, the bow every night. And it's amazing to me that we have this great uh, resource, this asset in the city of Calgary right in downtown core, but changing that vibrancy, um, you know, another thing, um, having a made in Calgary uh, talent pipeline, right? We've got world-class education. We've got our greatest asset in the city of Calgary is our people, right? And so, you know, when you talk about attracting new businesses uh, to the city of Calgary, uh, large corps or uh, even small business, they want to know that they have a talent pool, right? You know, great that we can open an office, we can uh, uh, provide you with A-class uh, office space uh, uh, at a reasonable cost. But if you can't staff it, you, if you don't have employees available, uh, then you've got an issue. So, you know, making sure that we have that made in Calgary talent pipeline, and that's about keeping our youth in Calgary, you know, uh, in making sure that they not only have jobs when they come out of post-secondary or even high school for that matter, meaningful employment in their chosen profession, but also creating that vibe, that vibrancy that uh, from a quality of life issue that they want to stay in Calgary. And so that's, that's the kind of stuff that we, it's not just a single bullet, silver bullet that's going to, that's going to fix everything. We have to take this multi-prong approach where it's, you know, having the vibrancy, having that uh, meaningful dialogue around uh, uh, business environment that makes it inviting. It's uh, about having public transportation. It's about connecting our international airport to the downtown core via rail. Like there's so many things to talk about, but yeah, it's, uh, uh, you know, top two or three things we've got to get there for sure. So before I continue on with those line of questions, you mentioned the big, uh, the, the elephant in the room that is the Green Line public transportation. I want to get on the record. Um, where, what's your opinion on the Green Line? Um, I know the province is holding it up right now because they want to see a business model with it. But at the same time, other candidates are saying it's going to create 20,000 jobs. We want to bring economic development to our community. So why should we not be advocating for 20,000 extra new jobs to the community? So what's your opinion? Yeah, uh, I'm in full support of uh, uh, strong public transportation. Uh, we need it for if we're going to be world class city, we need the world class transportation. So I'm no question in support. I'm disappointed in how Green Line in itself has unfolded. Uh, we're talking now shelving north of uh, the river. Uh, that leg is going to look like it's going to fall to the wayside. Uh, we have the capability of shovels in the ground in the southeast lake. You know, why are we not creating those jobs today? Uh, the land is acquired. It's flat. There's no tunnels. Let's get busy. Let's get some uh, let's get some movement. This was an election issue at the last election, and we're still talking about it in this election. So uh, that's where I question. And then connecting. I'm dis very disappointed that we're not connecting uh, YYC uh, to downtown. That's a game changer economically. Uh, you know, in so many ways. And then to expand on that, I'd love to see connection from YYC through downtown uh, out to Banff, have rail okay. now, not light rail, but heavy rail. Um, that's an economic impact that is off the charts uh, positive for us, uh, creating uh, create jobs. We have 
1.2 to 1.3 million visitors to uh, International Airport every year that never see downtown Calgary, or never see Calgary at all. They hop on a tour bus or rent a car and they go straight out to Banff or Jasper, uh, you know, collecting just a small percentage of those uh, visitors and collecting them through downtown core for, you know, a meal, a hotel stay, you know, taking some arts and entertainment and then out to Banff, you know, great. Um, so that's the kind of stuff that I want to talk about building for the future. Uh, you know, our youth, uh, you know, we got to give them a reason to stay here. You know, some of our candidates are, are uh, you know, slash and burn uh, type approach, not wanting to invest in infrastructure. We can't do that either. That'll save or uh, solve the property tax issue for the day. Uh, but then five to 10, 20 years from now, we're going to have a hollowed out city uh, where no one wants to be. Right. So we have to look at cost saving measures. We have to look at how we can handle the property tax issue, but also talk about creation of uh, um, capital projects and uh, building out infrastructure and so forth for the future. Uh, we got to have a vision for the future. And, and that's you know where I talk about, you know, having arts and entertainment and culture and public transportation, having all that stuff that not only retains the people in the city of Calgary that we already have, but attracts new to the city of Calgary. Uh, I, I, I come from the northeast uh, section of Calgary. I'm in Whitehorn, Ward 10. Um, we are a diverse community, and not just only in the northeast, but all across Calgary. How does your background uh, prepare you to represent such a diverse community? Because we have newcomers to Canada, we have newcomers to Calgary, we have lifelong residents of Calgary. How does your past as a lifelong member of uh, uh, Calgary prepare you to represent all Calgarians? Right. Yeah. So, you know, I, long before this election, uh, I've worked in the community, all sectors community. I've, you know, we've had, uh, you know, safe injection site discussions in different parts of the community. I've taught uh, board governance in, in at the community level for uh, volunteer uh, community association board. So, you know, in my business dealings, uh, you know, I work with uh, uh, different industries, uh, different cultures. So yeah, I've got a vast amount of experience in that area. And, and I just want to be at the table and have those meaningful dialogues. So, you know, I often say that if you want to have meaningful consultation, then have uh, the groups that are involved, uh, the stakeholders at the table right from the get-go. Don't just check boxes at the end of the day or when you're at the finish line and, oh, you forgot to uh, check a box on meaningful consultation or we should have that community organization in here to make sure that we've consulted with them. Have them there right from the get-go. Have those discussions, those meaningful dialogues right from the start. Uh, one, it's more efficient. And two, it's actually meaningful uh, rather than just checking boxes at the end of the day. Do you have a hard time saying no? The question, the reason I ask that is you have a, in Calgary, we have a diverse group of people who are going to be coming to the next mayor saying, I need this project. I want this project. I want this sports field. I want this uh, road paved, but you have to outweigh the needs of the few with the needs of the many, because you have to represent all of Calgary. How do you see yourself working with groups to say, you know what, we can't do it this year, but we can do it potentially two, three years down the line. Right. Yeah, there's no question. I'll, I'll say this, uh, uh, full transparency uh, in my personal life. Uh, yeah, I have a tough time saying no, I, I just, you know, I, I, I love working with people. I love helping. Uh, but when you come to business or when you come to uh, budgetary discussions or the needs, whether it's social or economic needs, yeah, you, you, you got to put some priorities based, you know, uh, around city of Calgary, you know, when you talk economically, uh, I prefer to look at a model uh, priority based budgeting, right? We've got a certain amount of money, uh, let's start at number one and work our way down. And when the, not to say when the money runs out, but when we fulfill the top 10 priorities, uh, then we could talk about the 11th and how we're going to fit that 11th priority in. Um, so yeah, it's, it's being able to navigate because you can't please everybody. Uh, you know, it, you can't, win. <laughs> unfortunately, you can't, you can't win over everybody and you can't, you can't say yes to everything. One, um, it makes it very hard to do business that way. And economically, you, you can't afford to do it. And then also from the social part of it, too, you, you know, if you say yes to everybody, I don't think you're being genuine at the end of the day. If, if you're just a yes person, then you can't possibly uh, have those contradictory uh, discussions if you're saying yes to everything. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 I'm not going to say it's a talent, uh, but it's a discipline. Let's say that. Uh Hypothetically, you were elect. You are the successful candidate on October 18th. Let's put your our thinking hats on. You, you've talked about what your number one priority already is, but you are going to be inheriting a city that is financially struggling. 
uh, you are inheriting a city that is uh, potentially stale, stagnant because of everything that's gone on in the last five, 10 years. How do you rally a people that have been so disheartened over the last 10 years to look to the future in a positive matter? Because I talk to my neighbors who have been here for 50, 60 years, and they do not give a sense that Calgary is in the best position or going to be in the next uh, good position in the next 10 years. So how do you give them hope? How do you give people hope that Calgary is on the rebound? Yeah. Well, you know, for, to your point, you know, economic downturn since uh, late 2014, uh, you know, uh, and then COVID, we get kicked in the teeth with COVID. And that's a, that's a global issue. First of all, we got to come out of uh, COVID, you know, and heal from and, and I don't mean physically heal. Yes, physically heal, uh, get vaccinations and so forth. But heal as a community. Um, you know, the greatest thing about Calgary is its people. Right. And COVID has polarized us. Uh, in a lot of ways, there's uh, we've got fractures in our population. What we don't need is fractures with, on council. We need that unified, positive um, council. We're going to see a 50% turnover on council um, due to people not running for re-election or they've shifted and running for mayor, uh, which is great. I think we're going to see a lot of fresh faces on council, which is fantastic, new points of view. Uh, but we got to come together. You know, inherently, Calgary is a positive city. Yes, uh, we've been mired down in a little bit of negativity over the last 12, 14 months, and we've still got some time ahead of us, uh, but we'll come out better than this uh, and stronger than, than we ever have because we'll come together as a community as we always have. Uh, but, you know, for me, being elected the next day, it's setting the tone right out of the gate of uh, decorum, positivity, collaboration, um, you know, and uh, I often say, you know, if, if you and I are in disagreement, Let's get on the phone or let's sit down across the desk and have a discussion. And, uh, you know, we'll arm wrestle, throw some punches, so to speak. And, but we'll do it respectfully and have that discussion. What I see happening in council these days uh, or in politics in general is they would prefer not to have those meaningful relationships, even if they disagree. Uh, they would rather go to Twitter or go to social media. And let's, let's have it out on social media instead of, you know, treating each other like human beings and respecting each other and having a meaningful dialogue face to face. Let's go to social media. Uh, I would rather just have building those relationships right from the get go, those positive relationships, get to know counsel like, uh, you know, and it's not always about work. So I want to have those relationships. I, I pride myself uh, in my organization here in Calgary that uh, I make contact with every one of my staff members every single day. And it's not about work. It's about checking in and saying, how are you doing? How's the family? What's going on in your world? What do you got planned for the weekend? You know, it's a long weekend. Um, I don't think that's happening right now. So having those meaningful relationships with, uh, with my fellow council members starts right out of the get-go. And if I fail at everything else uh, in my first term, uh, I will not fail at having positive collaborative leadership. And that's a massive uptick for, uh, for the city of Calgary because uh, citizens in general want to be proud of the people that they elect. You know, and, and so I'm prepared to provide that. And I think that's a big step. Again, like I talked about, and we talked about it before, and we're coming back to the administration side of it. Um, I, as someone who has worked in a city administration, you know where the waste is. You, 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 you can't say it because of all the legals, but you know where the waste is. Um, you talk to the residents of Calgary and they say, there is a lot of waste. There's a lot of people doing jobs that they shouldn't be doing, whether it be, we need to change the garbage schedule from this to this because this is a lot better, but we're not gonna tell anyone until the last minute. Do you believe our administration in the city of Calgary is bloated? Well, I, I think, you know, again, being a vendor, I've, I've worked with city of Calgary, I've worked at all levels. Uh, I think in a lot of cases, uh, I wouldn't say bloated, but misused, I guess, is the question. You know, is the staff count 14 and should it be 13 or should it be 16? I don't know. Uh, at the end of the day, I wouldn't say it's bloated, it's misused. And, you know, a perfect example is our uh, our pilot uh, project, our seven-year pilot project for waste uh, uh, garbage collection, waste recycling. So we've contracted out 25% of garbage its collection to the private sector for seven years. I'd, I've never heard of a seven-year pilot project, but that being said, uh, my understanding is we're not uh, side-shifting or laying off one individual in garbage collection, yet we have 25% less uh, work to do uh, via city employees, but yet we're not uh, side-shifting or moving those employees to a different department. 
uh, they're staying in that department. And then to add to that, we have 25% less work. We're not selling off one of those garbage trucks or, or assets. And so each one of those garbage trucks is, you know, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars. And yet, so 25% of our fleet isn't being changed out too. So that's the kind of stuff that I go, the cost savings measures, uh, the savings are there. They're right in front of us every day. It's changing the culture around how we, uh, how we deal with them. And I think that's where, you know, for the longest time, uh, city employees, city administration um, have been tampered down. Like they don't feel empowered to bring it forward because I don't think they get the support or they feel safe in bringing uh, cost-saving measures or innovation to the forefront. So again, the staff, uh, the employees of the city of Calgary, fantastic, uh, hardworking, want to provide value every day. It's the system that's broken, not the people. Well, and the reason I asked that is because uh, recently, earlier this year, you came out with the Silly Hall Contest. The uh, And I want to talk about that because it was a unique idea and I found it so fascinating that a candidate for mayor is willing to say, hey, Tell me what you're thinking is waste from the residents. So I, I got to ask the question, what are you hearing from residents that is wasteful that you went, hey, I didn't think of it this way or hey, I didn't think about that right. that way. So what are you yeah. hearing? Yeah, we just we just, you know, kind of just started getting the feedback. So it's it's interesting. We, you know, uh, you know, it's a fun way to approach a serious topic. You know, you know, a bar of soap, <laughs> uh, locally manufactured bar of soap, which is fantastic. We love supporting local local business and local vendors, which is great. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's it's the innovative ideas around, you know, like you said, scheduling a garbage collection or why do we uh, uh, pick up you know, quarter full uh, recycling bins, you know, like, should we spread out uh, garbage collection or recycling? You know, it's little things like that. It's uh, transit schedules. It's, you know, people that, uh, that you normally wouldn't hear from or hearing from. And even city employees are saying, look, I've worked for the city of Calgary for 22 years, you know, and uh, I've been doing the same job for this long and, and it just makes no sense, you know? And so they give examples like that, which is fantastic. Um, you know, for the me, it's, it, you don't have to be the smartest person in the room. Uh, it's collecting a bunch of individuals uh, and just coming up with great ideas and starting the conversation. Some of the ideas um, qu are in question, you know, uh, whether they're doable or viable. So the solutions So you kind of like, eh. but what it does do is it starts a conversation and say, yeah, that won't work, but that really brings up a good point. So sometimes uh, it doesn't need to be the bang on idea that is, but it's a conversation starter. So that's what it was meant to be is, is having a conversation in a fun uh, uh, you know, manner that is uh, less threatening, I guess, at the end of the day. So it's been a huge success. Uh, we're getting great feedback and a lot of people are getting real nice bars of soap uh, sent to their homes. So it's fantastic. Um I want to talk about campaigning. We're campaigning in a COVID-19 world right now. Um, when this airs, this is going to be August when this airs. So you were going to be two months away from the election. Um, hopefully by that time, everyone has their first dose and everything's semi back to normal. But what are you hearing at the doorstep? What are you, what is the biggest concern that people have right now? And what are you hearing and what do you, how are you addressing that for them? Yeah, you know, um, first of all, we're uh, it, it, door knocking is tough, right? We're trying to be respectful of uh, of uh, people's uh, not necessarily privacy, but comfort level around COVID and so forth. So uh, tough to door knock. We're doing some, uh, you know, what we call main streeting out in the parks and you know high traffic areas because people are outdoors, they already feel comfortable. So we're interacting then. But the people that we are interacting with is, you know, uh, respect, decorum, positive leadership. The economy, of course, uh, property taxes. Uh, those are all hot spots. You know, they want to come out of COVID. Uh, they're tired. Everybody's tired of COVID, the lockdown, the restrictions, wearing masks, you know, all that stuff. Um, I haven't found one person yet that says, yeah, I love wearing a mask. It's awesome. Uh, yeah. So, you know, people are just tired and, um, and they're mentally stressed to the impact of COVID, not necessarily just on us physically and, the, and uh, for the people that have passed and, and people that are still in hospital, but the emotional and mental impact and, and addiction issues and suicide, uh, it's, it's, it's off the charts. Uh, and so we have to recognize that we're going to have to come out of this and heal as a community, come together as a community, get back to being positive and collaborative, um, you know, and then economy, right? We've got to get back on track economy. Uh, I often say, you know, like uh, the necessities of life, food and shelter. 
right? Like, and, and it's hard to talk about anything else in life, arts and entertainment, or, uh, you know, going for a walk uh, along the river, if you can't put food on the table or in a roof over yet. So we got to talk economic, we got to get that back on track. That's, that's, that gives people comfort that they can now start living their lives and, uh, and talk about the funner things in life and, and quality of life, but food and shelter, and that means jobs in the economy. The great thing about having your own show like this, you can ask the question that you always want to ask to candidates. And I've asked this to the other candidate that's been on the show, and I will ask this to all the mayoral candidates. Before I moved to Calgary, Calgary had this uh, reputation, especially in the area that I was moving to, because you, I, I, I watched the news, I watched CTV, I watched CBC, I watched The Global, um, that crime is very prevalent in the city. You are seeing news story after news story of hit and run, shooting. I actually just went to the Tom Baker Cancer Center uh, two days ago, and I saw someone get hit and the car drove away. Ugh. In the in the cancer parking lot, it happened. Um, we we are we are struggling with crime, with prevention, with getting people jobs, like you said, how do we overcome that narrative? Because if I, I'm someone who moved here because I got married and my partner lived in the area, so I knew I was gonna be moving here, but how do we combat the narrative that crime is not an issue in Calgary and it is a safe place to live? Well, yeah, I mean, we gotta one, acknowledge that there is an issue uh, and, and different, you know, whether it's the downtown core, the Northeast is being hit very hard right now with, uh, with gang, gang violence, drive-by shootings, so forth. So first of all, acknowledging it, that there, that there is an issue, but you, you talk about not only retaining your existing population, but attracting new, they want to feel safe. Yeah. I mean, you know, great that you got me a job, but if I'm not willing to leave my house because I don't feel safe or I don't want my uh, kids to be playing at the park because of fear of, uh, yeah, that, that's not, that's a, not a great narrative. So uh, CPS, you know, again, does a wonderful job. Uh, uh, you know, I support CPS, public safety. We've got to get uh, that figured out, but they're working very hard at it. Uh, you know, the Northeast quadrant. Uh, yeah, there's, there's some real concerns there. Uh, you know, we don't want to turn into the next Surrey. Uh, you know, BC, and they use that narrative all the time, and and uh, Surrey takes offense to it. But you know, it's it's a good it's a good narrative, a good comparison, and we don't want to go down that path. And uh, uh, and we're kind of verging on that. So we got to have uh, public safety and security at the forefront of any discussion, uh, whether it's a budgetary discussion, a social discussion, because if people don't feel safe. Uh, you know, they're not going to want to live here or come here. Uh, you know, uh, Mayor Broncani had a great program that he initiated uh, clean to the core, where CPS and, and social agencies and community associations came together uh, to make the downtown core a safer place. Uh, our headquarters, our campaign headquarters is in the uh, Eau Claire area. And so I'm spending more time I live in East Village. Uh, but uh, the downtown core, yeah, you know, whether it's safe or not, it doesn't appear to be safe. That's, you know, Sometimes perception is reality, but uh, I tell you, it's it's a little dirtier than it used to be. Uh, riding the C train uh, is not as safe as it once was. Uh, yeah, so there's there's lots of work to do, uh, and people are working hard at it. So I don't want to take away from any of the work that's being done already, but I think we need to do more. And and I'm prepared to stand behind that. We got to make Calgary a safe place uh, because that's a part of the narrative, right? Uh, if you're talking about attracting new businesses to the city of Calgary, okay, great. Downtown office space, great. Uh, employee sector, yeah. Have we got a good talent pool? Yeah, we got that. Are you, are you actually a safe place to live? We better be able to check that box, right? Because no company is going to want to move here and start up, uh, you know, a thousand uh, person uh, company if their if their employees aren't safe. So we make we got to make sure that 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 box is checked too as well. So. And the other box that we need to check, and this is just yet again, two years being here, I've seen it change dramatically in the last two years. Um, vagrancy. Vagrancy has becoming because people are losing their job, they're going out on the street. How do we help those people as well from a municipal standpoint, in your opinion? Yeah, there's no question. I mean, again, not taking away any of the great work that's already already being done, uh, but a housing first model. Again, there's there's a proven track record around housing first. If we can get people, you know, food and shelter, uh, that goes a long way to rehabilitating and getting back to uh, uh, mainstream society where, you know, they can have employment and uh, be self-sustaining. Uh, you know, there's their thing that I think, uh, you know, Seattle is a good example where uh, not only are they taking care of the long term uh, uh, challenges around homelessness, but they're also because a lot of uh, 
uh, first time uh, shelter users here in the city of Calgary uh, are literally in the last 12 to 24 months because of COVID, because of job loss and so forth. The sooner we get uh, them housing and get them employed, it, it shortens that uh, going down that rabbit hole of them becoming a long term uh, challenge right and so I think uh, there's work to be done there we're doing great work, uh, but a housing first uh, uh, mentality is a great place to start. Uh, the last set of questions before we wrap up here. Um, this, uh, the next Calgary city mayor will have to make relationships, not only here in Calgary but provincially and federally. We have two provincial, we have a provincial uh, government and a federal government. Let's put it honestly, that do not see eye to eye. Mm -hmm. They do not seem, the, the heads of the governments do not see eye to eye. How do you work with two opposing parties like that? Yeah, well, I, I, first of all, I pride myself on working with anybody, uh, you know, I can, uh, regardless of political uh, party alliances, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, show respect, work uh, work in a positive collaborative format. You know, we've got some current council members that are running for mayor that choose to be the combative uh, nature. Uh, negativity gets you nothing, absolutely nothing. Uh, I, I equate it to, uh, you know, almost like a, a parent-teenager relationship. Uh, the teenager cannot disrespect the parent uh, at uh, noon on Monday and then go to the parent for their allowance at four o'clock uh, on Monday and expect a, a good result. Um, yep. I'll stand up for Calgary all day long. I'm that, you know, my role as mayor is to battle and work hard for Calgary and protect its interests and uh, the citizens of Calgary. Uh, but you have to do it in a collaborative format, uh, you know, working with whether it's the federal or the provincial governments. It has to be a meaningful dialogue. It has to be respectful. Um, trash talking someone on social media and then going to them for uh, a helping hand or, or uh, uh, collaboration the next day isn't going to work out well. Human nature says that's not going to work out well for you. So, yeah, taking a collaborative approach, standing up for Calgary for sure, uh, but we got to do it in a better format uh, that uh, serves everybody, all levels of government. Last question before we wrap up. Why should people vote for you? Well, track record, you know, you know, at the end of the day, and I appreciate the question, but, you know, I look at, uh, you know, I've, uh, I've got my resume speaks for itself. Uh, I've got leadership. Uh, I've been 30 plus years in business, uh, working in the community, working in business. Uh, my resume, uh, no question, uh, uh, no one can hold a candle to my resume around leadership and business acumen and collaborative uh, approaches and so forth. Uh, but at the end of the day, I just think that uh, bringing my collaborative approach to the city of Calgary, that positive uh, leadership qualities, that's going to be a game changer. Uh, and, you know, at the end of the day, if people want status quo, uh, and uh, they, they're happy with the way council has uh, operated over the last term or two, uh, then they're going to have three choices. If they want significant change uh, in how we operate in the city of Calgary, a new point of view, a different way of doing things, then there's really only one choice, and that's me. Awesome. Brad, I want to thank you so much for doing this. Before we do wrap up, uh, where can people reach out to you? How can people get involved with your campaign? Learn a little bit more about them. You learn a bit, little bit more about yourself, sorry. Yeah, uh, votebradfield.ca, and uh, you can go on, you can order lawn signs, you can donate, uh, you can sign up for our newsletter, uh, you can reach out to me directly. I love having conversations, I love meeting new people, giving different points of view. Uh, I often say that uh, when you have an open heart and an open mind and, and are willing to listen to different points of view, what happens in the middle is, is progress and magic. Uh, that's, you know, and so that's the way I approach life, regardless of politics. And so, yeah, votebradfield.ca, uh, reach out, connect, happy to have a conversation. Awesome. For my listeners and to the watchers as well, um, I will link uh, the website, uh, Brad's Twitter account and his Facebook page in the show notes. Go follow him, learn out a little bit more about him. Thank you so much for doing this, Brad. Greatly appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much for having me and uh, look forward to future uh, conversations.